Inspector General Ordnance Factories and JBN Ordnance Factory Board should be going on. Director of Center for Joint Focus Studies, who also has been our former Director General of Military Operations, General Pakistan. Consultant Ordnance Factory Board, who has also been a former Director General of Artillery, General Zinn Professor. ADG Perspective Planning and Head Army Design Bureau, General Nikhil Chanan. ADG Artillery, who is also in charge of modernization, General Deepak Kaurai. Distinguished Fellow, Center for Joint Warfare Studies, General Kaurasov. All our distinguished guests from the Indian Ordnance Factories, from Quality Assurance, from our esteemed and reputed companies of the defense industry, and all my dear colleagues in uniform over here. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is an extremely honorable moment for me to stand before you and announce that we are about to embark on a new training methodology today. As the head of a major training institution of the Indian Army. It gives me a great feeling of satisfaction that the top brains of our country have come all the way to Devlani from different parts of the country to impart and share their precious knowledge and expertise with us. We in School of Artillery must feel proud of the fact that we have been chosen by Headquarter Artrack who came from a seminar which is the first of its kind in the country, wherein the hardcore specialists of the nation's think tanks, researchers, technical wizards, and defense industrialists will share their knowledge with us, the users, particularly the young and the curious minds that are sitting in the middle and the back benches in the hall today. So at the outset, on behalf of the entire student body that is sitting over here, I must express my sincere thanks to the Ordnance Factory Board, Center for Joint Office Studies, DRDO, DGQA, DG Perspective Planning, and Director General of Artillery for spearheading this unique initiative and going out of the way for making all the domain experts available who are themselves involved in conceptualizing firstly the artillery operations and the requirements, framing the qualitative requirements of the equipment, designing and developing the same to its specifications, prototyping the same, manufacturing, and thereafter controlling the quality of the artillery equipment, ammunition and sites. The very fact that we are having this seminar today, immediately after we have just finished the Regiment of Artillery reunion, during which, as you all know, a large part of the school's resources were committed. And also the fact that despite a number of pressing engagements in the Ordnance Factory Board, as well as ongoing trials in the DRDO, it makes it very clear that all of us consider it very important for the students who are present over here today, and also the entire uniformed fraternity, to get to hear the best brains in the country about artillery modernization. One of the mandates of Center for Joint Office Studies is to bring the industry and the users together for better synergy. Hence, we have made it possible today for us to see the Ordnance Factories Board and the private industry here to share their capabilities and their emerging technologies. In return, we at School of Artillery also have a responsibility to bring you, who are the professionals and the practitioners of modern warfare, and the industry together, so that the industry gets our perspective and delivers to us state-of-the-art equipment, which should be beyond our expectations. So therefore, gentlemen, the Artillery Technology India 2020 seminar epitomizes this long-needed synergy between all stakeholders and herald a win-win situation which in turn will empower each one of us and which finally will ultimately contribute to the goal of enhancing our capabilities and enhancing our national power. I would thus urge each one of you to 
fully use this unique opportunity to interact meaningful, meaningfully and gain the maximum mileage from this event. As I stand over here in front of you, my thoughts go back to the 1980s when we got commissioned into the army. Life was pretty simple then because the basic gun was a good old 25 pounder gun and we had a, a simple overall inventory in artillery, a few wheel guns, IFG, mortars, 130mm gun, Grad M21. Life was pretty simple. The average fighting range of the field guns was hovering around 11 to 13 kilometers and the medium guns had a planning range of around 22 kilometers. All technical procedures were manual and time consuming. I remember while getting the guns into action and arriving them in the correct direction, we struggled for each degree and each minute for accuracy. Similarly at the command post, every activity uh, was manual and it revolved around checks and limits for accuracy to the tune of minutes and 25 yards or so. It is vital because for gunners, as you all know, accuracy and speed of fire are most essential for success in battle. In those days, there was no semblance of any synergy. The academia and the think tanks of the country, they thought on their own and they produced outputs. There is no doubt that they were good outputs, but they had to progress through laborious channels to get recognized. And in the bargain, many outputs, even though deserving, withered away with the time. The indigenous defense industry was limited. Most of the equipment that we handled was of foreign origin. And whatever indigenous equipment that we got, we happily accepted it and we exploited it as per our wisdom. There was no talk of progressive indigenization with development of new weapons and equipment. There was no talk of technology infusion through midlife upgrades, or there was no talk of stack on solutions to bridge technology gaps based on the feedback of the users. As soldiers, we spent a large part of our career in the field army where we dealt with application of capabilities towards the desired intent of the nation. But the development of capability, the exposure to the development of that capability remained extremely limited and hazy for each one of us. And we were happy to restrict it to a few individuals on the premise that it was not our job. But as the years passed, while we fought with our external and internal threats, the realization set in that we must invest in building our long-term capability for application of this asymmetry power. We realized that true capability rests on multiple factors such as robust policy, sound planning, efficient processes, and most importantly, to incubate the credible technology and create a vibrant and and a very diverse defense manufacturing base within the country. These appreciations gradually led to an increasing emphasis on leveraging technology. And for that, we have to outreach to the industry, to the academia, and usher in a culture of collaborative engagement between the technology provider, the equipment manufacturer, the quality controller, and the users. And this finally led on to the good old Made in India policy, which has virtually metamorphosed the Indian defense landscape. So today, more than ever before, rapid changes have taken place at a pace which was unimaginable 10 or 20 years ago. Today, the OFB, the Ordnance Factory Board, is no longer a vital. It has begun in-house design and development, which is forcing Indian and foreign companies to team together. The private sector has taken bold steps and committed a lot of resources to produce record-breaking equipment, which is globally accepted. There are hardly any big-ticket land systems which are not within their capabilities to produce, though with some foreign collaboration. Gentlemen, artillery guns, you all know, are judged on the basis of their range, accuracy, lethality, and mobility. The Bofors gun, which had set a benchmark in these parameters ever since it was inducted. But in the new systems that are being brought before us in the market today, all the three sectors, that is the DRDO, the OFB and the private industry, 
have proven themselves in the most befitting manner. So as a result today, we are privileged, all of us over here, that we have started experiencing state-of-the-art guns and equipment. Many of them indigenous, indigenous like the Dhanush, Inaka, Swati, and many more in the pipeline. All these systems are riding on a totally new technological base, operational efficiency and accuracy of fire through automated inbuilt features and linkages. Each gun platform that is getting inducted today is an autonomous machine that knows its precise geographical position on earth and hence easily moves, deploys, gets aligned in the required direction, fires with the required accuracy and lethality, comes out of action, moves to the next position and repeats the same cycle, all with deadly accuracy and consistency with minimal dispersion of fire. The precision guided munitions that are coming in today and superior design of shells, fuses and propellants are altering the destruction matrix of our planet. These guns can even fire independently, independently without a command post. The weapon locating radars, like Swati, are technically efficient with a chilling accuracy of detection, enabling fast response to enemy fire and their subsequent destruction. The automated fire control systems too have enabled instant digital transmissions from the OP to the gunner in a matter of seconds and without any voice transmissions. So the manual and painstaking technical procedures of the past on various instruments and guns have simply been washed away. So while we may applaud and welcome all these state-of-the-art equipment that is coming into our inventory, one must not lose sight of the fact that modernization is not restricted to mere replication of existing platforms. Once any equipment gets inducted, the process of modernization commences at the grassroots level, that is at our, at our level, wherein the new technology has to be absorbed by you all and you can get trained on the equipment to handle it properly. And this is what we all are doing now in School of Art. But this story of modernization will get an added bunch for all of us, wherein as a user, you all, armed with the adequate technical knowledge of today, you also start getting innovative ideas on your own or you start questioning the existing methods and processes or you start suggesting improvements for midlife upgrades or you start suggesting stack on solutions for bridging technology gaps then we will enjoy this tool of modernization it has to be a two-way affair and not leave it, leave it to the researchers and the developers and the, and the industry so with all these thoughts in mind the stage of this seminar was carefully drawn up around two months ago in my office in consultation with all the stakeholders. And I'm happy to say that full support has been extended by the art Act and the art directorate to make the agenda all in focus. All students of School of Party today who are here should consider themselves lucky that the leading factories of the Ordnance Factory Board, that is the Gun Carriage Factory, the Gun and Shell Factory Kasipur, Ordnance Factory Meda, Ordnance Factory Dehradun, were all involved in the manufacture of components of artillery gun systems are present here today. From the DRDO, the two leading laboratories, that is the HEMRL and the ARDE, have sent their speakers. The DGQA has sent its best experts in ammunition and army. And last but not the least, the brightest minds in the private industry are here to educate each one of you on the projects that they have undertaken. This seminar, gentlemen, is therefore the platform to learn how the indigenous sector in our country is doing its job, most commendably. Also, please remember that this seminar goes beyond the prese. The prese that we all study over here summarize the developments in the fields that your subjects cover. Prese can give you basic knowledge, facts and figures, theories. But you must lie that here amongst us, sitting here are many IIT graduates many post-graduates from the foreign universities, many officers with rich expertise who have crossed over to the corporate sector, willing to share their thoughts on emerging technologies and latest developments. It depends upon each one of you, therefore, to imbibe the knowledge that they are willing to share and do not take their word at face value. Question them, debate with them, and challenge them with your views, but in a positive manner. I will end my address by stating that all of us of this generation, the past generation, the coming generations are indeed fortunate and honored to have witnessed the paradigm shift 
from the simple 25 pounder gun that I mentioned to the potent mix of 155mm guns, rockets and designs that we have today, duly integrated into the automated networks of surveillance, targeting and fire control. The game has only started and this process of modernization will continue over the coming two to three decades, which I am sure will culminate with when your generation grows up and when artillery will emerge as an even more deadly and devastating combat arm of the Indian Army. Such seminars, therefore, gentlemen, are a vital part of the entire process and I would urge all stakeholders to give their free and frank views in all sessions of this unique event that is today and tomorrow. Thank you very much and have a good day.